Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics Tutorials. In this session, I'll be discussing on the switching characteristics of a BJT. We know that a PN junction can act as a parallel plate capacitor. In fact, a BJT has two PN junctions, one between the emitter and base and the other between base and collector. When a BJT is used as a switch, both junctions are forward biased, while in reverse bias, these junctions are reverse biased. Two parallel capacitances are exhibited by a forward bias PN junction, a depletion layer capacitance and a diffusion capacitance. A reverse bias PN junction, on the other hand, has depletion capacitance only. These capacitances do not play any role under steady state conditions. However, they contribute to the transistor's turn on and turn off behavior under transient conditions. The transistor model under transient conditions is illustrated in figure 2 here, where the collector to base junction and the base to emitter junction capacitances are CCB and CBE respectively. The ratio of IC to VBE is known as the transconductance denoted by GM of a BJT. The junction voltages and physical construction of the transistor are based on these capacitances. Figure 3 here indicates the switching times and waveforms of a power BJT. It should be noted that after the application of the base voltage, the transistor does not turn on immediately. This is because of the internal capacitances as discussed just now. The collector current does not rise even when the input base voltage rises from 0 to V1 and the base current rises from 0 to IB1. There is a delay before the collector current responds and it is called as delay time denoted by TD. This time is used by the BJT to charge the base to emitter junction from 0 volts to the threshold voltage of the base to emitter junction which is approximately 0.7 volts. The delay time is also defined as the time between the application of the base voltage and the time at which the collector current reaches 10% of its steady state value represented by 0.1 ICS. Once the base to emitter junction is forward biased, which happens after the delay time period ends, the collector current starts to rise. The collector current takes a time duration defined by TR to reach 90% of its steady state value represented by 0.9 ICS. This rise time depends upon the time constant defined by the input capacitances. From our previous discussions on the steady state characteristics of the BJT, we note that the base current IB required to saturate the transistor is normally more than the base saturation current IBS. This excess base current is stored in the base region. Greater the base current IB, greater will be the overdrive factor and thus greater will be the excess charge stored in the base region. This excess charge is also called as the saturating charge and is proportional to the base drive current IE as per the equation IE equals IB minus of ICS divided by beta. We know that IB is equals to ODF into IBS and ICS divided by beta is nothing but IBS. Therefore, I can simplify this equation to get IBS into ODF minus 1. The corresponding saturating charge is given by equation 2 which is QS equals tau S into IE. I will substitute for IE from equation 1 and therefore the saturating charge can be given as tau S into IBS multiplied by ODF minus 1 where tau S is known as the storage time constant of the transistor. Coming back to the waveforms of the switching times, we see that the collector current does not change for a duration of Ts when the base voltage is reversed from V1 to minus V2. This is the time duration during which the base current also changes from IB1 to minus IB2. This time duration, that is Ts, is required to remove the saturating charge stored in the base region. The reversal of the base voltage VB and hence the base current IB accelerates the discharging of the saturating charge from the base region. If the base current was not reversed as what we have shown here, the time taken for removing the saturating charge from the base region which is Ts will be considerably high. It should also be noted that as long as the saturating charge exists, the base to emitter junction is forward biased even if the base voltage VB is reversed. Once the saturating charge is removed from the base region, the base to emitter junction will start to charge 
to the negative base voltage minus V2 and will be reverse passed. The collector current now starts to decay and reaches zero in a time period called as TF. Here, TF is the fault time. The rate of decay during the fault time depends upon the capacitance of the reverse biased base to emitter junction. To understand the concept of saturating charge, we use the diagrams as shown in figure 4 here. The figure 4A indicates the charge profile in the base region and figure 4B indicates the charge profile during the turn off. When the base current is reversed at the beginning of the storage time TS, the charge profile starts to change. During the duration of the storage time TS, the charge profile changes from A to C and during the fault time TF, the charge storage changes from C to D. At the end of this transition, all of the excess charge carriers from the base region will be completely eliminated. To summarize, we can now define the turn on time of the transistor as simply the sum of the delay time TD and the rise time TR which I can give in a mathematical equation format as T on equals TD plus TR. Very similarly, the turn off time of the transistor can be defined as the sum of the storage time TS and the fault time TF, which is once again given in the mathematical form as T off equals TS plus TF. Right, that is about a brief discussion on the switching characteristics of a BJT. Thank you.